Hey guys, Mr. BXRP here and welcome back. Today is December 2nd of 2020. I just got back from lunch with a friend of mine named Mike. Um, Mike is a friend that I got interested in XRP about a year and a half ago. And um, Mike has been able to amass an XRP bag um, after the last year and a half that he was a very happy camper to have lunch with today and is doing extremely well on his investment and uh, and sees the future, gets the whole thing, understands it. It's funny because I brought XRP to Mike as being the, my last stand for someone to tell me I was crazy. Mike is extremely conservative uh, in a lot of ways, especially financially. And I explained to him what Ripple was doing. I explained to him XRP a year and a half ago. And I said, Mike, I need you to shoot holes in this thing. Tell me I'm crazy and straighten me out. And, uh, and within a couple of days, Mike called me and said, I'm invested and I'm going to keep investing. And uh, he bought right into it. So congrats, Mike. You've done a great job. And, uh, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, we had lunch today and you shared your story because it was fantastic. So anyway, I'm sure a lot of you guys have friends like Mike that you got invested and hopefully at, uh, at good prices. I mean, you know, a lot of the people that I got interested in XRP got in at a better average than me. So they're, uh, they're doing fantastic, but it's good stuff. All right, bunch to go through today, guys. Bunch, bunch, bunch. So let's do that. So let's, let's refresh Fiat leak. So XRP is just under 62 cents. Bitcoin is just over 19,000, struggling to get over 20. But I think once it clears 20, it might keep sailing. And looking at Coin Paprika, all right. So the market cap's at 571 billion. I just can't wait to cross 600 billion. It's just a thing for me. You guys remember when I was saying that about 300 billion. I just can't wait. All right. So Bitcoin is at 19,059. Ethereum's at 597, XRP's just under 62 cents. Uh, Tether is holding firmly at $1. And Litecoin's at $87.51. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is at 292. It's down 13.96% on the seven day. And on the seven day in the top 10, uh, looks like XRP or Ethereum is doing best actually, is, is up 0.74%. And, um, and Bitcoin Cash is doing the worst. But anyway, we're still moving in the right direction. It's a heck of a bull market. And I don't think we're anywhere near the end, but that's just my opinion. All right, so let's jump right into this. The big interview was today, Brad Garlinghouse with Julia Chatterley. So full disclosure, guys, the last time Julia interviewed Brad, I DM'd her and I said, Julia, great interview, but I've got some questions that I'd be asking Brad after being in the space for three years and I'd like to share them with you. So I shared the following two questions with her several months ago. Um, and then yesterday she said she was excited that she's got Ripple's Brad Garlinghouse tomorrow on first move. Would love for your crypto thoughts, questions, or whatever we should discuss. So I jumped right in underneath and I said, questions for Brad Garlinghouse. And I gave her the same two questions that I DM'd her several months ago. Now, when I DM'd her several months ago, her response to me was, you know, going through the election right now, can't wait to get back to, to finance and uh, and get back with Brad. So she was excited to get back with Brad and do an interview. So here were my two questions. Number one, if you had a magic wand, what is your specific dream scenario of regulatory clarity? Question number one. Question number two, let's imagine that exact clarity is announced today. What happens next for Ripple, its customers, and XRP in the following 30 to 180 days. So those are those are my two big questions that I want to ask Brad Garlinghouse. So we're going to go to the interview now. She's only posted one third of the interview. It's a three part interview. So in the first part, I believe she asks my first question almost uh, almost exactly, which I was thrilled to hear her ask it. Um, the follow up question is the question that really is the stinger and is really one one I want to hear. I don't know if she asked that question, but we're going to find out when she releases the rest of the interview. Let's jump over to the interview, and I have it queued up, and uh, it's going to go for about four minutes. I want you guys to hear what I think is the best part of the first uh, the first part of the interview, okay? Here we go. Talk to me about regulation, because this is what it distills down to, what the future of regulation looks like. You said, look, we're a, a patriotic U.S. company. We want to remain here, but the regulation here is 
to some degree suppressing innovation, it's restricting your business and you see others doing better around the world. Where are you on the, on the decision perhaps to, to relocate in order to facilitate growing the business? You know, we absolutely want to see the United States lead in this uh, new arena that we call blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And I think we certainly saw that in the age of the internet 20 plus years ago, that the US had clear regulatory frameworks and that allowed, it, that allowed investors to come in and make those investments. Today here in the United States, we're actually out of step with some of the other G20 markets around the world. You know, in the UK or in Singapore or in Japan, you have had that regulatory clarity. You, know, you asked uh, why Bitcoin has outperformed, and one of the reasons is likely that there is clarity and certainty about Bitcoin's uh, regulatory framework here in the United States. That hasn't been the case with other cryptocurrencies, including XRP. But when you have that certainty, when you have that clarity, if you're an investor or you're a developer using these technologies, you can invest in them and you can build on top of them with clarity and certainty. The, the U.S. has not provided that certainty yet, and we have been big advocates of a bill that was introduced in con Congress called the DCEA, or Digital Commodity Exchange Act. We think it's a very important step in providing that clarity and that certainty here in the U.S. Do you need that clarity before you IPO, Brad? Well, that's a great question. You know, uh, <laughs> Brad's not used to great questions, you can tell. He wasn't ready for that one. Let it rip. If not... You know, been public about what our plans are to go public uh, with the exception that I've said, I think there will be public crypto companies. I originally predicted we'd see them in calendar year 2020. I think you, you and did. I may have discussed that. <laughs> we did. Uh, I, I think you know, the pandemic has affected a lot of things. And I think that has slowed things down a bit. But look, it's very clear there is enthusiasm for real use cases to solve real problems. And when those are scaled problems, I think you're going to see a lot of investor interest in both the crypto markets as well as the public equity markets. What does an ideal regulatory framework look like there we go. For, for Ripple and for the digital asset XRP? I just, I just want to give you as a sense of how it's holding you back. Is it preventing you adding central banks to the platform? Is it preventing customers, particularly international companies, joining the payments network too. What specifically is it? Is it preventing at this stage? Well, oftentimes when I'm speaking to customers and we're talking to them about our product that uses XRP in the payment flows, they will ask me about the regulatory dynamics. And they, we have had customers say, look, until there's clarity in regulatory frameworks, then we're gonna hold off. Now that has not been the case because of the clarity and the certainty in countries, as I mentioned, like the US, excuse me, like the UK or the UAE or Switzerland, you do have companies in those markets saying, absolutely, we're supportive, let's move forward. Here in the United States, you know, we actually have 95% of our customers are non-US customers, and only about 5% are here in the US. And people say, well, why, you know, you're a US company, why is that? One of the dynamics is we have US companies who are waiting for clarity, and the clarity really is it emanates from the Securities and Exchange Commission. The, the US SEC said two and a half years ago, almost three really, that Bitcoin was not a security. And then they came out about two months later and said that Ether is not a security. And then they stopped and instead focused their energy on you know, some of the, the bad actors in the ICO market, the initial coin offering. So for us around XRP and the, the over 100 companies that are working with XRP, getting that clarity and that certainty it's, it's very clear to me that XRP is being used by many companies as a currency. You had the US Department of Justice refer to XRP as a currency. You've had FinCEN refer to it as a currency, but you haven't yet had that clarity from the US SEC. Yeah, it's hugely important. Brad, don't move a muscle because we're going to wrap up the conversation here, but you and I are going to... Okay, so that's the first part of a three-parter. Um, you know, SEC, so, so look, you know, they're waiting on the SEC to finally make the announcement. Now, there is not any fiber of my being that doesn't believe that the SEC has told Ripple face-to-face, nose-to-nose, toes-to-toes, exactly what they're going to announce. Ripple's frustration and Brad's frustration is that they haven't announced it yet. Brad knows exactly what they're going to say. He just doesn't know when they're going to say it. And they're driving him crazy because he's got customers banging down his doors to do business in the U.S. They don't want to hold XRP. They don't want to use XRP and money flows until they hear the SEC say 
It's okay. It's not a security. Here's what it is. Let's rock and roll. Now, a lot of speculation has been made out of tomorrow, December 3rd. SEC's having a meeting. Um, I saw the itinerary. I didn't see cryptocurrency on the itinerary, so I have no reason to believe a decision is going to be made tomorrow. Doesn't mean that it's not. It's probably our last chance of the year to see something announced. Certainly hope it happens, but I don't know that it's going to happen. I think Brad being on this program today was his last Hail Mary to the SEC to say, come on, guys, you guys are meeting tomorrow. Give us the announcement. Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Let's get this beast out of the cage and let's get this party started. I think that's why Brad was out there today doing this interview. And and I think everybody would agree with that. I mean, there's no coincidence that Brad's on TV today, the day before the SEC is going to meet. There's just no coincidence. It doesn't happen that way. I'm sorry. So anyway, the next two parts will be out later this afternoon, and we'll jump on them as soon as we get them. Okay, this was Anthony Pompliano. Anthony Pompliano <laughs> with, um, well, with the guy from Shark Tank. Um, just so you know, this guy, we have seen previous videos, and, and his, what's his name? O'Hare? Um, I forget his name. Uh, I know it's O'Hare is his last name. But anyway, we have seen him do um, on video saying positive things about Bitcoin, later on saying negative things about Bitcoin, and now saying positive things about Bitcoin again. This guy's all over the place, but he's strategic. And these wealthy people, they don't want you to know what they're up to. He was first positive, then he got negative. When he got negative after he was positive, it's probably because he was stashing his stacks and, and, and investing. It's just unbelievable what these people do. But let me let you listen to this. It's 25 seconds. Let's talk about Bitcoin. I do own a small amount of Bitcoin. There's simply nothing like Bitcoin. It's the only one. Take 1%, put it in Bitcoin. You'll be very happy, my friend. You can't deny the success of Bitcoin this year. Maybe I should put some to work. Maybe you've convinced me. It's a major benefit of our, of our time together today. I'm ready to invest. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, so he, uh, he's he been in Bitcoin a long time, pretended to not be in Bitcoin, but he's been in a long time, and, uh, and and everyone knows it. All right, so Uphold. All right, so listen, I thought I had full clarity from Uphold a couple weeks ago. I had asked Uphold for clarity. Can I remove my XRP once the snapshot has been taken? I couldn't find my tweet because I had so many tweets, but, but Uphold was very clear and said, yes, you can remove your XRP. Then I went on to say, there won't be a hold on my XRP for any reason. I'll be able to take it off. They said, no problem. You'll be able to take it off immediately. Not a problem. Okay. Which I still believe to be true. However, someone DM'd me a DM they got from Uphold that contradicted that statement that you maybe couldn't take your XRP off and continue to get the Spark tokens. Now, don't get crazy. We still don't have the answer. So I posted on Twitter again yesterday. Hey, Uphold, can users take their XRP off your exchange right after Flare Network Snapshot, or does the XRP have to stay there? I have to change my glasses. Um, until Spark is delivered. I thought I got clarity on this, but I have since seen conflicting answers to this question. Okay. Um, all right, Uphold comes in and they answered me and they said, we will be posting a full frequently asked questions about Snapshot very soon. Stay tuned for that official post. Okay, um, so I think that's important. I, I know it's got to be frustrating for these companies to get constant questions, but you know it's important to us. We need the answers. So I can't tell you the answer, guys. I don't know. I think you can take it off, but I don't know. They told me you can. I don't know if it's been changed. I don't know if it was a mistake when they told you you can. I don't know the answer. I'm only bringing it to your attention because I don't want anybody to expect something that isn't going to happen. So you need to keep your eyes on Uphold. Look for that frequently asked questions sheet. See what it says. Um, we did recently find out. Nobody really talked about this until the last week or so. But you're not going to get all your spark at one time. You're going to get 15% up front and the rest gets paid out, I think, over 24 or 36 months. Um, in small bits. So literally they've designed this coin so that people won't be able to dump it. And uh, it's very unique in that sense. So um, anyway, keep your eyes on that. We'll see how it goes. All right, PayPal. I saw PayPal doing a paid promotion yesterday about it said crypto for the people is here. Now you can buy, hold, and sell Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies on PayPal. Um, and this was their thing. There wasn't any sound to it. It's kind of weird. But um, I still can't buy 
bit I still can't buy on my PayPal because apparently I have a business PayPal that I didn't even realize I have a business PayPal and I don't want to open up another PayPal but if I had PayPal I would buy crypto just to say I did uh, we also learned yesterday that 20% of PayPal users have bought Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency on PayPal already which I think is a crazy high number it's absolutely amazing uh, crypto bull at crypto bull 2020 posted this uh, this is what the chart is telling me for xrp price over the next nine months so he's saying that it's going to go from 92 cents to three dollars to 19 dollars to 120 dollars um wow okay well i want to see it i'm one of those i'll believe it when i see it guys i love it when people post this stuff but we gotta we gotta hold them to it and uh, and see if they're accurate I hope he knows what he's doing, but I will tell you this interesting thing. I listened to the blockchain backer this morning. I've never heard him speak this way, but he was calling for if we see two, if we see two altcoin um, seasons right now, back to back, and you need to listen to the blockchain backers video from today to get this, to get the whole deal. Um, if we see two, he was literally calling for it to go to 55 to to $100, so which is similar to what this guy's saying. Um, if we didn't see two altcoin uh, seasons, um, Blockchain Backer, I think, was calling for like $12 or $13, something like that. So these guys, a lot of these chart guys are calling for really, really high numbers. I know a lot of people don't believe in TA. I'm still on the fence about it, but I'm watching it daily. I want to I wanna watch it. I want to look at it, and I want to judge it to see if they were right. And that's why I'm doing it. So I'm sharing it with you guys. I'm not saying it's true, but you need to watch it. Okay. This was from British uh, Miss, and she's at British Girl XRP. And, and she was answering to somebody who said, okay, she was talking about the bear market. Um, and she said, but I think it's a lot harder knowing when to sell in a bull market. And then she went on to say, okay, she answered somebody and said, not really. My portfolio went to XXXXXXX in January 17, sold a fraction, then lost 85%. Ain't doing that again. Okay. I agree with her a hundred percent. If you guys have been listening to me for any period of time, you have heard my story and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of sum up my story right here in a tweet. Okay. This somebody was Jay Hyatt said, I'd love to hear from some firsthand accounts on what it's like in runs like that. Um, I've yet to experience that feeling because we were talking about bull runs. Digital asset investor was talking about, um, uh, exit strategies and things like that. And I put arrows up. Jim Hyatt wanted to hear first accounts. So I said, hey, Jim, and this was back. This is a while back. This is back on 2-9 of 19. Hey, Jim, um, here is mine. I posted back in February. True story. Moral is have a cash out plan ahead of time because greed will take over and you will lose. And this was my this was my tweet. Believe this from Rob Art. So I, I was re responding to Rob Art talking about taking profits. I said this, and I quote from myself. Last bull run, I was on my couch up 800%. My heart was racing and I literally started chewing on an aspirin because I thought I was going to have a heart attack. That is how fast it happens and how it feels. I never took profits. Listen to Rob. Okay, guys, I heard a lot of people out there saying, I'm not selling XRP till it hits 10. I'm not selling XRP till it hits 50. I'm not selling till it hits 100. I hear people say I'm not selling until it hits 1,000, 10,000. Listen, I'm telling you, I have been there. I watched my investment in XRP turn into the size of a house on my phone within 27 days. And then for several weeks, I watched it disappear. And I just shared the story with, with my friend Mike at lunch. I told him how much I had invested, how much money I saw disappear, and what that money would have meant to my family and my life if I had taken profits. And let me tell you guys, it was a lot and it hurt. Okay, so I have a cash out plan. A lot of you have seen my cash out plan. If you haven't, I'm going to have it pop up at the end of this video if you want to watch it. You do your own cash out plan, what's based on your life, your, you as an individual, your age, your family, your circumstances, and everything else. I'm going to share mine with you just to give you ideas, okay, because you need to have ideas on how to do it. Now, my cash out plan hasn't changed, okay? I just will tell you this. In the last couple of weeks... I've decided to take one of my small bags, I call it a shallow bag, a little small bag, and I will probably cash it out below my first cash out point that's in my cash out plan. 
Um, but, uh, but for the most part, my, and it's just a small bag just to have some bucks maybe for Christmas or, or for new years, but you guys need to watch my cash out plan. And because in my cash out plan, I have pitfalls that you need to look out for. Okay. So I'm just telling you guys, I'm taking profits. You do whatever you want. I'm taking profits all the way up, but here's, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the point I want to make though. I am keeping the lion's share of my XRP. I mean the lion's share for major double digits and hoping that I'll get to triple digits someday. So so just so you guys know, I'm not selling out all my XRP at six bucks, eight bucks, ten bucks. No. I'm selling out a small portion um, and then I'm holding the, the majority of it. So just so you know, and you'll see my plan and, and it'll explain it to you. Okay. Moving on, someone at someone asked, does anyone have a photo or chart that ranks XRP holders? Just so you guys know, if you go to ledger.exposed, you can go there. You can plug in how much XRP you have and see how you rank in the world of XRP. So a lot of people aren't aware of this. For those that are, I'm sorry, I have to have to, you know, we got a lot of new people here. And you can also see, uh, you know, how many people have so much XRP. One of the things I noticed yesterday, which I thought was interesting, I might as well talk about it, is there are 226,351 accounts that have 19 XRP or less. And then there's another 153,000 that have between 20 and 499. That means a lot. there are millions, or, or at least, let's see, there's probably a million accounts or more that have that 20 XRP stuck in them because you have to have a minimum of 20 XRP to have a wallet. Like I've got like six wallets I don't use that have 20 XRP stuck in them, which really sucks. And I look forward to, now I know you can get 15 of them out. There's a way to do it. I don't know how to do it, guys, but there's a way to get 15 out, but you got to give away five of them. Um, probably might be a good thing to do at some point because I'm not going to ever use these accounts again. So we probably, if somebody has the method of how to do that, post it in the comment section of this video. I'll share it with everyone if they want to get it out of those accounts. At least they can get they can recoup 15 of the XRP. But uh, but there's a lot of XRP. I think I estimated this morning when I was looking at it, maybe 7 million XRP are caught up in those accounts. It's a lot. Okay, Barry Silbert at Barry Silbert. And Barry is the co-founder and CEO of the Digital Currency Group. And he said, Candidly, I'm shocked that Grayscale hashtag drop cold TV ad seems to have triggered the gold bugs even more than the first time we aired it last year. Maybe it's because we ran it six times on CNBC alone today. So apparently the whole drop gold thing is really getting uh, getting the gold people crazy. Um, shortly after they started this drop gold campaign, I was able to buy the URL dropbanks.com, which I thought was a winner. And I would think that somebody in the crypto world wants that URL. If you're listening and you want it, I want to sell it to you and, uh, and just DM me because I have dropbanks.com and it is for sale. And um, who knows? I think Barry's a good buyer for it. I think Celsius is a good buyer for it. I think there's a couple of companies out there that are a good buyer for it. And if you're a good buyer for it, send me a DM. I'll, send, I'll sell it to you. Okay. From XRP Crypto Wolf, CEO of the world's largest asset, uh, uh, CEO of the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock, says Bitcoin has caught the attention of many and could evolve into a global market asset. He said having a digital currency has a real impact on the US dollar, making it less relevant on a global scale. So Bitcoin is getting the attention of everyone out there. Okay, uh, from Binance, Binance posted this. Right now, the famous Bitcoin pizza would be worth $194,870,000. That's nearly $200 million for a pizza. For those of you who don't know, the first purchase that was made with Bitcoin for pizza um, that's what the value of the pizza would be today based on how many Bitcoin he gave for that pizza, which is just a, a crazy thing. Okay, uh, I've been posting some fishing things now and then, and I told you guys I caught a 12-pounder, and you guys have asked me, you wanted to see it. Here it is. Here's my 12. Um, it was not pregnant, okay? And I could fit both of my fists. I'm looking at the fish right now because it's on my wall. By the way, I didn't kill the fish. I took all of his measurements and I had him recreated, not nearly as ugly as he really was. He's actually gorgeous in my mount, but he's ugly in real life. I was able to take both of my fists, put them together, and stick them both in his mouth. And for you fishermen out there, you won't be shocked to hear this, but the day before I caught him, um, I was fishing with my one of my, my older daughter, 
And uh, we did see a bass in this lake take a baby duck, and it was quite a large baby duck. These guys eat ducks. I mean, they are monsters. So there's my there's my 12 pounder, guys. Um, and I'm staring at it right now on the wall, or or a replica of it. And it took me over 40 years to catch this fish. Um, I've got many eight pounders, a couple of 10 pounders, but this is my big boy. And if it had been pregnant, I think it would have been a 14 pounder. But it, it wasn't pregnant. It's got a nice belly, but not a pregnant belly. Okay. Global Investor Conference, link two. So the Global Investor Conference is coming up. It's December 8th and 9th. All right. For those of you interested, there are going to be a lot of, there are going to be billionaires there, a lot of people from the crypto space. Here's the thing, guys. It's free for you guys to register. So go to link two, get, go to link two. This is, if you want to go directly to it, go to theglobalinvestorconference.com. You go directly to this and register. Um, there are so many people are going to be there and, and link to, as you probably know, they sell pre IPO private shares of companies, which, which can only be bought by, um, accredited investors, but they have made everyone welcome in all of their conferences. So if you want to just download their app, you can download their app, register their app. You don't have to be accredited to do that. You'll get invited to everything. Um, I have a link in the description of this video. If you want to get to the app or just go to your Go to your um, wherever you get your apps for your phone. It'll be there, link to. Um, but you're going to have the Drapers are going to be there this time. You're going to have, let's see who's going to be there that you might know. Uh, let me roll down here. So many people. Christopher Lee is going to be there. Trademan, Adam Trademan. Um, Adam Trademan is from uh, Bird Wallet, BRD Wallet, which he's an interesting guy. Certainly interesting to hear him talk. A lot of these people, a lot, a lot of new projects you're going to hear about. So anyway, if you're interested, guys, get registered. You'll be welcome to be there. I'll be sitting in on the conference. Um, they have two conferences. They have one for the um, uh, one for the for United States time, I guess I should say, and they have one for Asian time. So they have it on two different days. I'll definitely be in there for the U.S. one, and, and I'll be able to ask any questions of any of the participants if I want to ask questions. They've invited me to do that, which is kind of cool. Okay, last thing I want to show you is this frog. This is about the most irritating sound I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, my God. I think... Um, oh, I won't let you hear it again. That frog, I think he's a mouse-eating frog is what they are. I, I've seen them before. I've seen them at pet stores. They literally eat mice. It's kind of crazy, actually. All right. Um, once we get Julia's other parts of her um, interview, I'm going to listen to them. If there's anything great, I'm going to add it in a video either today or tomorrow. We'll see. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a website developer, and I'm not a crypto expert. These are my opinions only. Don't make any financial decisions based on anything I say. Oh, by the way, I prepaid for everyone today who hasn't subscribed to my channel to subscribe right now prepaid you don't have to pay anything it's free forever just hit the subscribe button hit the bell if you want to i prepaid for that too and if you hit the like um, you automatically become a vip so hit the like button if you liked my video share my videos with anybody you think might appreciate them i thank you all for listening everyone have a fantastic afternoon and i'll see you later bye bye